Hi, today we're in New York and I have a very special guest with me. His name is Jim Broach. And Jim, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'd love to. I'm the Executive Vice President of RSDSA. We're a national organization that's dedicated to providing support, education, and hope for people with complex regional pain syndrome. Which I remember was called RSD, yes. reflex sympathy dystrophy. Yes. And so there's been a change. There was a change because they felt that with the RSD, it talked about a mechanism of uh, underlying the disease. And really right now, even though the disease has been known in America since the Civil War, we still don't know why someone develops it. Now. So now tell me, a lot of people, how many people have this? We actually don't know. There's been no good epidemiological studies, but we there was one good paper that, mm -hmm. that really looked at the Netherlands, which has a more of a homogeneous uh, healthcare system. And they, based on their population and based on the United States population, we think there may be up to 50,000 new cases each year. And the problem is that no one has really heard of it. So basically, let me tell you a little bit of the telltale symptoms. So there's generally some type of trauma, and most notably it's fracture, sprain, crush injury, even immobilization. And so there becomes this constellation of symptoms that occur in the acute phase where there's color changes, there might be um, there's swelling, there might be sweating, and there is this incredible pain that uh, on a McGill pain index is rated as a 42, which is the highest. As the pain becomes more centralized, there's some, something develops called allodynia. And it's when um, normal sensation becomes painful. And, and when, you, when we do our conferences, even in the winter, sometimes people come in shorts because they can't even deal with the touch of fabric. Do people get over this? Are there cases where people have improved? There, yes. Basically, if, if you could catch it early, go to the right doctors and, and allied medical, and basically the whole, the whole thing is to keep moving. People learn quickly that if I hurt, if I don't move, I will feel better, and that's the worst thing. And, and children uh, develop it, and basically kids are more of, you teach them that it's gonna hurt, but you're not gonna harm yourself. And overwhelmingly, children do get better with this. So who, what kind of doctors do these patients usually see? Well, the first probably you will see is your primary care doctor. So um, the first hurdle is to get the, the primary care doctor to recognize there is something wrong and then be, refer them to a pain specialist. And hopefully the pain specialist will also have the, a PT, an OT, a psychologist. Basically, you really need an integrated, interdisciplinary approach. So is there much research going on? Right now, our organization, RSDSA, has is forming an international consortium because the research that has occurred is small. Now the, the government's at an impasse, so it's up to small not-for-profits and, and disease-specific groups to really bring the researchers together, try to raise the money, try to get them to cooperate with each other. The, the crazy statistic that I learned once was of all the healthcare dollars invested in research, less than 1% goes into pain research, yes. and that is the number one reason we go to the doctor. And that's why we are doing the Community Pain Center, because um, with the you know, Institute of Medicine coming out with this report yes. recently and saying that this poor group of people, 100 million people in the United States that are suffering, aren't getting the help they need. One of my favorite surgeon generals once said, um, the treatments of today cannot be those of tomorrow. And so it has to change. The sad part is a lot of people, are, adults, are injured at work. So you're sentenced to a, a system that works well with non-chronic illnesses. So a lot of people have great difficulty in getting authorized for treatment. Do you think that having the community create a voice um, to be able to, like you said, it's hard to identify because people are spread out all over. Mm -hmm. But if we can get the community to come together and create a voice, do you think that would be helpful? I think it'd be, I think it'd be wonderful. I mean, pain truly is a public health emergency that, mm -hmm. that we have to solve. Great, Jim, thank you, thank I appreciate you. it. Yes. That's it for today. Thank you, Jim Broach, for being here. And I hope that it's been helpful for you to learn about this very difficult illness.